Yo, we gotta get the mix. Got to get the mix. Gotta get the mix. Not Yachty mix. This is a really cool experience right here. I would never have thought in a million years I, I would be dipping bread into an egg, but and you get the little uh, little teapot here. This is cool. This is the Yarrow Cha Yo, Marco, I'm gonna need you to uh, meet us in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. All right, bet. I'll be there in two seconds. I'm about to have Thai chicken rice four different ways. What is in this case? In this video, we wait in line for the hottest soba spot. Marco shows us his new favorite Malaysian restaurant. We compare chicken and rice, and then we head to Brooklyn to try a new Asian food court. This is new Asian food in NYC. Hit that like button. Let's go. All right, our first spot is Chef Huang's. Now this spot is unlike any other Peking duck spot because it focuses on Jianbing and Peking duck. That is the cheapest, most well-known street food in Beijing. And then also the pinnacle of Beijing cuisine, guys. Very interesting mix. Let's go in and check it out. I'm here with the owner, Summer. All right, what should we order here? <laughs> Yo, Shama Hao. Um, so, our most popular food is a Peking duck. Okay. So, maybe every customer order this this uh, Peking duck. Do you think it's the best Peking duck in New yes, York? Yes, best Peking duck. All right, we're going <laughs> to check it out. Chef Huang's is doing things differently. They are, truly are a creative restaurant. Look at this hand sanitizer. It's like a volcanic uh, bubble thing. Oh my gosh. That's how you wash your hands here. Just. Should, should I just do it right now? Yes. Go right now. Yeah. I got to break it. Very crispy. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Yo, I love how they're mixing Beijing dishes in with like French techniques. I think this is so cool. I think this is like a dream for a lot of Asian chefs, right? You want to mix uh, the French techniques that you learn in school, but with dishes from your hometown. You got drunken crabs. You got the Shanghai smoked fish. You got the liang pi right here. And then you got your gluten. And ending off round one, we got fresh yang rou chuan right off the shao kao, the mini grill, and I can even season it myself. This is like a really cool experience to have, you know? And I just seen the videos on Instagram where the guys are like, you know, they're grilling them, flipping them. Let's try it. Y'all so good. Wow. I think walking in here, you don't know fully what to expect, but this is some of the best yang rou in New York right now. That's fire. Here you got beef tendon with a pastry top, fusing a French technique with a Chinese dish. Mmm. I think more Chinese restaurants, if they're trying to do fusion, should think about dishes like this. It's relatively easy and just adds a whole different layer to it. We got the drunken crabs. Mmm. It's like a little bit of soy sauce, and I want to say wasabi too, or some ginger. Kind of good. I like that. Smoked fish. Um, one of my favorite, actually, dishes from Wuxi and even the Shanghai region in general. Mmm. Three, two, one. Here's some liang pi. Um, I think this more comes from the Xi'an region, so it's cool that they're really mixing like all the different regions here at Chef Huang's. Mmm. Ah, good. Here we have the braised gluten with bamboo shoots. You can find this at a lot of Shanghainese restaurants. Mmm. It's summer. Mm -hmm. This is like the premier item. This is it. This is what people come to Chef Wong's for. <laughs> what is in this case? This is the Dibu Chef Special. Wow! <laughs> this is their take on a beef wellington. This is a beef rib wrapped up in a crispy pastry shell with little pineapples on the side. <clears throat> I've never seen any dish like this. When she first said crispy pastry skin, first thing that came to mind, I thought it was going to be like a scallion pancake, like a Chung except it's not. This is more French style. Mmm, that's a great rib. Kind of remind me of like a Neuro Drembing, AKA the beef pancake roll. Honestly, I did not know what to expect coming in here. The decor is very like sort of subtle, but I'm telling you, this is one of the best fusions I've seen between French pastry or old Western culture and like Beifang Northern Chinese food. This food is slamming. Honestly, it's like the pastry puff becomes part of the noodle. And I'm telling you, this is one of the best fusions, if not the best fusion I've ever had between French pastry driven cooking and like Beifang Northern Chinese cooking. Okay, and incoming, we got the Beijing Kao Ya. Guys, this is the famous Peking duck. And you get the little, uh, little teapot here. This is cool. We have this salt and seed mix. 
that I'm gonna put onto the beef wellington. It's almost like an everything bagel except Chinese style. Mmm. Woo! All right, you know at Chef Huang's, they really tout their Peking duck. So of course, you gotta judge it. So let's go in on it. Not too much. Scallions, of course. I like a lot of scallions personally. And then just a few cukes. I'll wrap it up. Let's go, guys. This is Chef Huang's Peking duck. Possibly some of the best Peking duck in New York. Let's check it out. And nowadays at any good Peking duck spot, you're gonna get a little side of sugar to dip your skin in. And this is gonna make it almost taste like a, like a sweet duck crispy candy. Mmm. Hey guys, if you guys live around Midtown or are looking for like a real homely type spot, you know, it's kind of a hole in the wall. It feels like I'm in the Shunli district of Beijing, you know, where all the foreigners and the, and the Western style housing is. And uh, honestly, if you want to try some new dishes that you've never had before, like this beef rib Wellington, I say come by, man. And I just love seeing Chinese food get more creative. You know, they have their traditional here and then they have their new school here. And I think that's a pretty cool mix. So shout out to Chef Wong's. All right, you guys, we are at the most hype ramen spot in New York City right now, Okiboro Ramen. I'm telling you guys, this Superman had people waiting in line for like 90 minutes. We only had to wait like 15. Um, I've got the Superman right here. This is from Japan. Of course, guys, you gotta take a look at the soft boiled eggs, soy infused, half boiled, soft boiled. Of course, I gotta put the spicy in the Sukumen just to kick it up. You know, Sukumen's my favorite just because it almost is like a, an additional piece of work, it makes it funner. The Tantori, this is a chicken ramen like I've never had. Look how milky that is, bro. Mm. Ooh, very deep chicken broth. Man, that, that flavor is like 10 times the chicken flavor as almost any other broth I've had. This is the chicken chashu. Of course, you know, I just kept it all chicken today. Man, break down how, how deep the chicken Bro, you know, I've had chicken soup in my life, but I'll tell you this, as far as like what tastes like a chicken tonkatsu, you know, where it has like a lot of fat, it's very thick. This probably does the best job as any. I've had a lot of good chicken ramens in my life, but nothing this creamy. When everybody's coming here for the sukamen, but honestly, I think the tonturi is underrated. It might be the best item on the menu. Don't sleep on it, especially if you want chicken. Manjuga this guy. Worth the wait. Shout out to the boy over there. He hooked us up with some extra chashu because he used to watch our videos. Hey. Oh, chashu and the chicken. Oh, and the tonturi. Oh, no. Guys, I had both ramens and I gotta tell you, I'm being 100% honest when I say when you get the chashu, the pork belly, with the tantori broth, that is some of the best ramen I've ever had in my life. The sukamen here is good, it's great, but this is better. Oh my God. Wow. Yo, Marco, I'm gonna need you to uh, meet us in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. All right, bet. I'll be there in two seconds. All right, you guys, we got a special guest with us. Joining us is Marco. Uh, Marco, we're at Kapi Diem. In Mandarin, it would be Cafe Dien. This is a uh, Malaysian coffee house. Now, I know you love Malaysian food, but you haven't been exposed to this side, right? Never have. I'm always exposed to like the curries, you know, in, in these Malaysian spots, but I don't smell it right now. I smell some coffee beans and I'm ready to indulge. Marco, I know you've been exposed to the restaurant style, but you have not been exposed to this specific Kapi Diem coffee house Malaysian cuisine aspect. I never have. We have a coffee in a bag. This is pretty all new to me. We got rice balls, like li <laughs> literally a rice ball. And of course, uh, you got the classic nasi lemak. All right, yo, Marco, what, what are you looking at, man? I'm trying, I'm looking, I'm trying to put this inside a hole and I cannot find yo, it. Yo, you treat uh, that like a Capri Sun. <laughs> I know. I think you gotta open so, the top. Yeah. Open the top up? Oh, wow. Open that and then you slip it oh, in. Oh, like right here. The top, yeah. No, 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 open it up like no. the zip lock. Oh, see kids, go to college. I think. Oh, all right, oh all right. there we go. Wow. Let's try. This is pretty cool. Never seen this before. Coffee mm -hmm. in the bag. I mean, Starbucks, step your game up. Oh, wow. 
It's exactly. It, it is it's a very sweet. It's a salted, uh, sweet coffee drink. Wow. See, my coffee cannot be bitter. It has to be sweet. That's perfect right there. All right, you guys. We are looking at authentic Chakwe Tiao uh, right here. Marco, what are you looking at, man? You see the shrimps. You got the lap churn. We got this a little, is, uh, you know, Chinese sausage. We got a little, a little egg right there, a little green. We're trying to be healthy. Now, Marco, I know you had said that you had been really exposed to a lot of like Chinese Malaysian food, right? But this is a little bit more getting into like Malaysian Malaysian. Yeah, right? I, I don't think I've ever had authentic Malaysian before, and I'm excited that I'm here right now because I always wanted to try, you know, the authentic, the real deal. I gotta be better with the chopsticks today. Mark, are you struggling? Man? We might be here till tomorrow morning doing this, but you know what? It's gonna be worth it because. We, we, no, we're gonna we're gonna work on it. We're gonna get your chopstick for like holding it yeah. for a little bit because you, right now you're holding it in the middle. But you know, the more I gotta I be hot. Uh, yeah, chalk way <laughs> <laughs> It was close. It was good. It was. A... Oh my goodness! Mm. Let me tell you this. That spice punches you in the face. This, oh, man. this tastes like Malaysia for sure. Yeah. Way more kick, right? Way more kick. Way more kickback. I, I call it, when they're spicy like that, I call it recoil. So of course, we got authentic chicken rice, but uh, Moko, like, tell us, how's it di looking different, similar, or what? Listen, I've had chicken rice balls, but not like this. This is a literal rice ball. Never had that before. Turtle. It looks, it, it, <laughs> seriously, oh my God, massive. Chicken, chicken rice. rice. Honestly, guys, come to Copy TM if you want to feel like you are in Kuala Lumpur. Oh. You know what the dopest thing about the kapitiam is? They serve a lot of dishes that maybe like New West Malaysia, which is dope by the way, would not serve. For example, they've got the Milo toast. There's Milo sprinkled on that French toast and fried. This is kaya toast. And this is nasi lemak. Milo, Milo French toast. toast. That's perfection right there. I mean, waking up in the morning and eating this, I wouldn't move the rest of the day. So David, what's this green stuff? I would say the kaya toast, the middle part is a little bit like a coconut jam. Oh wow, coconut and then jam, okay. What you're gonna do is go ahead and just dip it into the soft boiled egg right here. Dude, I can't believe we are in New York City right now. This, this is like really a very is, authentic experience. This is a really cool experience right here. I would never have thought in a million years I, I would be dipping bread into an egg, but it's, let's do it. Kaya toast. toast. I love that. It's like it's such a like a rich texture it has. The, the, what exactly is this green again? That's all over my finger right now. I wanna say, it's just kaya. Last but not least on this authentic Marco's first time Kapitiam journey, we've got the nasi lemak. Marco, what do you know about it? I know nasi means rice. Uh, I don't know really how to eat it, but we're gonna. I'm gonna try it. Hey, you know what? You eat it much like you shoot a basketball. Just these three fingers right here with the follow through, man. Wow, there it is. Uh, you got the anchovies with the chili. We've got this uh, obviously uh, hard boiled egg. Boom, we got a piece of cucumber. We're just gonna get in there. Boom, three fingers. Nasi lemak. Makam, makam. All right, Marco, we're looking at the Malaysian mochi, the mochi. Um, Man, it just feels like we're in Asia together right now, right? Like, they do such a good job of replicating that Kapitiam experience here at Kapitiam. And uh, man, it's so crazy, right? It's amazing to see how like restaurants in today's world it's like almost you're outside of New York City, but you're in the heart of it. Yeah, I do think in the old days, you know, people used to have a Malaysian restaurant and throw like a Yankee fitted to like try to fit in, but it's all good. Like let the spots that are old New York be old New York. Watch it. Hey, my Malaysian brother, thank you for coming for uh, with me to Kuala Lumpur. Walla way, walla way. All right, you guys, our next Asian concept is me, chicken, and rice. I'm telling you, this couple came straight from Thailand. You're gonna feel like you're transported to Bangkok right now. And a lot of people think that this is the absolute best chicken rice spot in the city that you don't know about. Let's check it out. Signature in here is uh, number one, the steamed chicken rice, AKA the Thai style Hainanese chicken rice. But like a lot of people, like they do like crispy chicken, it's a fried chicken, and a roast test, we do like a Thai style. Oh, and it's, then I saw this is really unique. You guys do a cow moon guy kanji. Yes, we do like yeah, the, the combination cow moon guy kanji. Hey, I'm telling you guys, when spots specialize in one thing, you know it's gotta be strong. I'm about to have Thai chicken rice four different ways, all right? So here we have Khao Moon Gai, the classic, this is poached. Here we have the fried one, this is Khao Moon Gai Todd. And then we have Gai Yang, which is the roast chicken. And then we have 
cow tam, which is this rice porridge chicken soup right here, which is basically cow moon guy in rice soup. And then you have the tzab wings. Of course, this is classic. You gotta have these. And then of course your ginger chili sauce. You guys know the quick history about how, how Khao Moon Guy got to Thailand. You know, it starts in Hainan and then the chicken rice dish, it spreads around Malaysia and then it comes down to Thailand. And obviously there's a huge Chinese diaspora in Thailand. You know, a lot of people of Chiu roots or even Cantonese roots um, or Guangzhou roots. So guys, hey, chicken rice found all over the world, baby. Mmm. And of course, what's very authentic they give you the little chicken gizzards here. My, it's not my favorite part, but I'll eat it. I think a note for this spot is that they only use chicken thigh. There is no chicken breast in this restaurant. They do not even have that piece of meat here. Um, the prices are super cheap. This is $11, this is $12, this is $13 respectively. Guys, you're really not gonna beat that price in West Village. It's juicy, the rice is tasty. Mmm, nice and flavored. Have Khao Moon Gai Todd. Todd means fried. Uh, a little, little May Ploy chili sauce. Crispy, crunchy, let's get it. Mmm. Oh yeah. What is better than fried chicken thigh? Guys, me chicken rice is doing it real authentic. They're serving you the fried ones. A lot of spots will try to, you know, Serve you chicken and rice like 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 it's it's only a health dish, so they won't give you the fried ones. But you know they doing it authentic here. Mm. All right, guys. Here we have the gaiyang, aka the roast chicken over rice. Now gaiyang is like a popular dish that you will find at the actual sit down restaurants. But for a to go spot, man, this is pretty special. And I love how there's a different sauce for each dish. Guys, Thai food with the flavors is crazy. Mmm. Right guys, here we have the cow tom, and cow means rice, tom is like a soup, oil, and this has fresh pieces of big ginger in there, that's how you know it's authentic, man. They're not playing around. Chicken ginger rice soup on a chilly day in New York City. This is my go-to winter dish. All right, here for my drinks, I got the rose milk. This is super Thai. And then here I have the classic Thai iced tea. And I here I have the soup at the end. Um, basically, it's just so cool to see uh, a chicken rice spot still keeping it real deal and humble, even though a lot of other spots are trying to like commercialize it and expand and, and scale it, which are fine, which is fine too, because you need that representation. But here, you need this too. So come to me, chicken and rice over in the West Village. And shout out to me, chicken rice. They make it feel like I'm back in Thailand. Welcome to Guy Chicken and Rice, New York City's newest fast casual Khao Moon Guy concept. Order off the screen, what are you gonna be getting? Oh, definitely a steamed dark bowl meat. Dark meat bowl, okay, of course I'm gonna add the soup. Boom. You know what, we can't just do the steamed. Here, Andrew, are you more trying to try the roasted or the stir fry? Oh man, I like, I like both but Make a decision, man! What's the spicy fried chicken bowl? Oh! All right, you guys, we are checking out Guy Chicken and Rice. Uh, one of our friends is the partner here, Ace. And I'm telling you guys, this is the only chain around New York. There are a lot of mom and pop shops doing Khao Moon Guy. This is a actual structural chain, and they use an all computerized, you know, ordering system. This is the uh, Guy Todd, the fried chicken. I'm gonna tell you guys, that green sauce is unbelievable. You would not think that a chain would have a sauce that authentic. I'm telling you, that's like Elmhurst kicking you in the mouth. You guys know that chicken and rice is one of my absolute favorite meals in 2022 to make. This, I got the all dark meat steamed. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you guys, this is the one for the health nuts with the ginger sauce. Of course, the rice is important. Literally guys, I think the Guy Chicken and Rice is the best chicken chain that I've seen on the East Coast. Obviously on the West Coast in San Francisco, they've got a couple of them. Listen guys, this is a great concept to run a fast casual restaurant out of. They've got the iPads everywhere. They've got the technology very, very quick. Kudos to you guys. All right, everybody, our next new Asian concept is Soba Mama. It actually feels like something that you'd see in Asia. It's a fast, casual uh, soba spot. This cost me 20 bucks. I just ordered straight off the computer. It came out. Uh, there's not a lot of people working back there. It's highly efficient, and uh, I'm interested to taste it. 
All right, so of the Japanese noodles, as you guys may know, ramen is originally from China, as in la mian. Obviously, you know, it's become its own thing, but soba is actually native to Japan. And these are buckwheat noodles. Look at this, you have um, your fried tofu skin. You got a lot of beef right here. You have your wasabi here. I'm just gonna pour it into my soba sauce right here. As you can notice, a lot of new Asian concepts are trying to like lower labor costs, use as few people as possible. Obviously, the whole concept here, it definitely does remind you more of Asia, maybe like a Taiwan, Tokyo, even China, you know. Here, I'm gonna try the fried tofu skin, the Niku. This dish is very sweet and refreshing. I have the pork belly here, I have the onions. Overall, man, this is a pretty nice dish. And if you want kind of like a real life kind of Tokyo experience, you do gotta drop 20 bucks, but overall, I'd say I like it a lot. In 2022, everybody's trying to make Japanese concepts a little bit less intimidating, a little bit more accessible, and a little bit cheaper. As you can see, you just walk in, you order off the screen. This came out in five minutes. Honestly, it's a nice refreshing bowl of soba. Mmm. Great for students. All right, you guys, next up on brand new Asian Concepts in New York City, we're here at Egen and Bangkok Bar, and we're actually in Industry City right now, super far. This is a relatively new food hall, and they got like, what, some inventive Asian concepts, right? Yeah, I'm always excited to see what the Asian food hall spots are serving because you can be a little bit more experiential. You're not serving like the whole restaurant experience, so let's go check it out. All right, they got some of the classics. They got bibimbap, kimbap. They have a jajangmian, the japche, spicy pork bulgogi. Oh, they got different dumplings, chicken wings, of course. For me today, I'm gonna order the Chinese Korean food, the jajangmian and the tangsu. I, I just got to. Oh, Mrs. Hi. Lee. This is Hello. Oh, nice. Hi. Kwa Kling or the uh, crying tiger jungle. I feel like we gotta try the crying tiger. Andrew. I think food halls are always an interesting balancing act, right? Because you're trying to make the food tasty and authentic to an extent, but also appeal to that like corporate white collar office vibe. Yeah, and I do think food halls over the years have gotten better as people have tried harder. And we're gonna check out Indian home cooking, Taza, right now. Let's go. Yo, immediately they've got Indian basmati rice balls. I gotta get the butter chicken. For me, I get it. I know it. It's cliche. I really wow. love butter chicken. I love butter chicken. What do you want wow. to say? Wow. Go, we gotta get the mix. Gotta get the mix. Gotta get the mix. Gotta get the mix. Are you definitely? Not yadi mix. Not yadi mix. <laughs> Fast Indian food. Cool. So, it's so this was like a Indian office bowl, right? Yes. Well, what, 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 what was it? Because I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's butter chicken, chana masala, which is like chickpea curry. And um, it's the white sauce, it's made out of uh, whole milk yogurt. So like, you know how like the halal people, it's the same same way. So this is not, this is authentic. This is going to be good. Yeah. But it's just given in a more like office way. Yes. But the food is authentic. It's authentic. If we do a concept where it's called a tiffin, uh -huh. So the fin is basically, you see those little steel things right over there? Like right yeah. next to those fancy looking boxes? Yeah. So in India, what they do is when like a husband or anything like goes to work, they use those tiffins and it's layered in food. So like bottom part is rice, then the vegetable is second, then the meat is third, and then and so on. Anyway, Andrew, this is supposed to be the modernized version of the tiffin box. Ah! Stacks, different compartments of food for lunch. Who's to say that a food hall can't have some authentic inspiration? All right, Andrew, we are looking at our modern day Tiffin concept. This is butter chicken. You know, you got China masala. You got a whole bunch of things in here designed to replicate the old ways. And what do you got there? I got the masala lays. Mm. All right, I gotta try that first. Pretty good. Got a spice to them. Ah. Have nadyadi mix. Some noodles, some crispies, some rice. David, you could probably put this on top of there. Oh, yeah. Let me go in on the butter chicken first, guys. I know this was the, uh, you know, foreigner pick, but I love butter chicken. How is that, bro? This tastes exponentially more authentic than I thought it was. This is wow. authentic. This is good. This is legit. Is it more legit if I add this? Oh! Oh! That's my side. That's my side. Just say. Mmm. 
I really think Food Hall Food is stepping up. I'll tell you this, guys. That was easily the most authentic Indian food I have ever had in terms of like this type of modern space, like the mall or like a food hall type of vibe. This is good. You know what's new for 2022? Fast Indian food, but it's still authentic. She made this in like one minute. Andrew, it's really interesting to find like Chinese Korean food actually at like a food hall. Yeah. This is uh, Tang Su Yu. I mean, I feel like originally, you know, I feel like Chinese Korean food has gotten bigger over the years because to be honest, it's just tasty. Yeah, I mean, in Cantonese it's actually called Tim Shu Yu. So it's actually pretty similar in pronunciation. Uh, yeah, let's check it out. Bro, that's good, man. And you gotta try some of this. This is sweet and sour pork. This is good. Mmm. Freshly made, took 10 minutes, guys. You know, things at food halls, they can't take too long to cook. So shout out to everybody making their food fast. I always thought it was interesting the way like sometimes Korean Chinese food reminds me of Americanized Chinese food. Mm. All right, guys, here we have the Korean corn drink. This is a popular drink you can get in the bottle at a lot of uh, Asian markets, especially H Mart. Ah, sweet, corny, and refreshing. All right, you guys, the food has arrived here at Bangkok Bar. This is a really cool concept because, Andrew, they took the crying tiger steak, but they took it out of the filet format and almost put it into just like the cut up, you know, Asian stir fry format, but it's still crying tiger. Mm. This is an affordable and more efficient format, Andrew, for this type of cooking setup because, like we said, guys, people's cooking and like the formats available, it's always dictated by the space, the kitchen the you know ability to pump it out at high volume high speed what i love about this dish it's sitting on a bed of lettuce so you get a little bit of salad greens and a lot of beef mm. here i have one of my favorite dishes from northern thailand khao soy and it's a chicken curry noodle it always has crispy noodles along with non-crispy noodles on the bottom let's hit them with a little bit of lime and yes they are egg noodles very similar to the ones that uh chinese would use in one ton noodles let's get it this is definitely more of a dish that you would find at a Thai restaurant and not just a food hall, but I'm glad they're doing it here. <coughs> I can smell it. It's got a lot of flavor. Mmm. Like I said, guys, it's 2022. Foods halls are changing. They're feeling a little bit more like hipster restaurants in the LES, and the food is too. It's a dope trend. I love to see it. Andrew, I don't know if you would agree with me, but honestly, that was the most authentic food hall I'd ever been to in my entire life. Yo, I love what they did. They made every little shop kind of like a grocery store as well for that ethnicity. I thought it was creative. It looked clean, designs are good, and the food was good, and it was fast. Shout out to Industry City Brooklyn.